Hey guys, so you just heard a part of the Hobbit um, theme song, or I guess the Lord of the Rings theme song as well. And that is because um, it's finally here, the third and final chapter in Peter Jackson's The Hobbit Trilogy. I apologize ahead of time. I was going to post this review a lot sooner, uh, but work got in the way and just a bunch of other life stuff got in the way. But um, it's finally here. And um, for those who didn't see my other Hobbit reviews from the previous two years, those are up on my YouTube channel as well. Or just let me know through a message if you wanted to see those, and I can always send you the links to those other two reviews from earlier. But in The Hobbit Part 3, The Battle of the Five Armies, it was originally called There and Back Again. I don't know why they had to change it, but um, in The Battle of the Five Armies, basically this is the um, wrap-up of what we saw in the first two films. You know, we get to see, you know, the conclusion of Smog, why he didn't come back for Lord of the Rings. Uh, we get to see, you know, w you know what happened to Legolas and, um, you know, kind of how Aragorn kind of came into all this what Gandalf, kind of his involvement in all this, and I guess the best way to put it without going into too much spoilers is basically Bilbo and his um, dwarf army, or dwarf company if you want to call them that instead, they have to basically take down the orc army once and for all, as well as some other armies that are going to get in the way of um, these hobbits and these dwarves claiming this treasure that they got from part two. You know, that's the one where they, they met up with Smog and, you know, they found this treasure and everything like that. And basically without taking out this army, they, they cannot claim that treasure otherwise. And one of the dwarf members of Bilbo's group really wants this treasure. There's a specific piece of the treasure that he really wants. And, you know, there's this whole battle between, you know, you know, since he really thinks he's this king, he really deserves this part of the treasure. And, you know, these other people don't want him to have it because it's a very powerful piece of treasure. And um, for the most part, this is just basically a wrap-up of what we saw in these in the first two Hobbit films. So overall, guys, I did enjoy this film. I didn't quite enjoy it as much as the previous two Hobbit films, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, though Part 1 had a lot of pacing issues, um, I still think Desolation of Smog was probably my favorite of the Hobbit movies. Just had the best story, best pacing. Uh, that one had the best CGI, I thought. Just the overall the overall production, the overall product we got out of that film, I thought was the best out of all three of these. This film I liked, but it just didn't quite... It didn't feel as necessary as the first two films, and I guess that's one thing I really didn't care about this one as much. So overall, for my positives and negatives of Hobbit Part 3, The Battle of the Five Armies, um, I will say this. It's a very nice wrap-up. It very much, you know, transitions into, you know, the first Lord of the Rings movie, you know, into that Lord of the Rings trilogy overall, and kind of how everything kind of pieced together and became what we what we all know out now as um, the Lord of the Rings trilogy. So just a nice wrap-up. It just concluded everything very nicely. It did leave you hanging like it did the first two films, but those were kind of intentional in those other ones. But just an overall nice wrap-up. Then my other big compliment of this film is this film had some really good special effects and some great visual effects. The first two films did this already, and specifically the second film I thought did an even better job than this film did. But regardless, these are some very good special effects and visual effects. Peter Jackson very much knows how to use his tools very well. Um, there is a little bit of a George Lucas effect, I'm going to be honest with you, of, you know, too much CGI after a while. Um, and that'll be one of my negatives here in a few minutes, is there was something about the CGI, and specifically in this installment sp specifically, that kind of bothered me a little bit. But overall, like I said, just Peter Jackson knows his tools when it comes to filmmaking. I like how this film dedicates time to both story and battles. Uh, I think that's something I probably would say about the first two films as well. Uh, just It really does spend a lot of time letting you know these characters, you know, letting you know kind of how the wrap-up of this film impacted these characters and where they went after this story concluded. Um, and it also dedicates enough time to the battles that you know we all hoped to see, given that the title of this film was A Battle of the Five Armies. And then I briefly covered this earlier, but I think this does set up uh, for the first Lord of the Rings film very well. It does kind of explain how Hugo Weaving's character got there, how Kate Blanchett's character got to the first film, and uh, you know what Gandalf was doing, and where um, Legolas was hiding this whole time until the first Lord of the Rings film started up. Um, like I said, just a very nice wrap-up for those, and just a nice lead-in to what became the Lord of the Rings trilogy. 
And for those who are hoping a big and epic film scale for this film, you're going to be happy with this. It does have a very big level of filmmaking. It does feel epic at times. Um, so Peter Jackson, once again, really made this really big and epic film scale kind of film. And for those who were hoping for that, you'll get that with Battle of the Five Armies. Now for my negatives, and I was briefly talking about this earlier, there is some pretty noticeable CGI. And what I mean by that is there's scenes where like they're standing on mountains or they're looking at something that's, you know, further down on the ground or, you know, they want to show this, they want to show this big distance gap, I guess. And there's times where you can definitely tell that they're in a green screen room. There was just a lot of times where, um, kind of like what people complain about with the Star Wars prequels, there was just times where I felt like I was watching two people standing in front of a green screen. And I, I didn't like that feeling. I thought the second film did a very good job making me feel like I was in this world, that I was in Middle Earth with these characters. But there was just a lot of times in Part 3 specifically where I really felt like I was just watching two people or three people or a group of people standing in front of a green screen, and it just got really annoying at times. And I guess that's what I was briefly talking about earlier when I said that this film does kind of have a little bit of a George Lucas effect in the sense that Peter Jackson has so many tools available to him for the CGI technology to the point where it's just too much of it after a while. I just really wanted to see these characters in this world that you know I could leave reality behind for two and a half hours and just watch this film that takes place in Middle Earth. There's just a lot of moments in this film where I really got taken out of the fact that I was watching something that felt like a big green screen room. I would also say this film also, out of all three of the Hobbit films, doesn't have enough standalone elements. Um, the thing about this film is, it, unless you watched part one and part two right before this movie, you're probably not going to want to watch this film as it's as it's you know as its own film uh at least with part two you know you can watch it for its own purposes you know it has enough going for it that you can go back and rewatch it and want to rewatch it just by itself later on and part one obviously has its own his its own you know values considering that you know it's the beginning of the story and uh you know, we got to see earlier characters and we get to see more screen time with them. But just this one specifically, I felt like it just didn't have enough standalone elements. If you didn't see the first two films, and it, I feel like this film is, is strictly... It feels like it's there just because it needs a wrap-up for those first two films. If that's the only reason why it's there. And it's really too bad that, you know, Peter Jackson couldn't have just made this you know, two-part film series like he was originally planning. Because I really think The Hobbit could have just been told in two films. And there really wasn't enough standalone elements here to make me say, oh, well, all of these scenes need to have their own film. It just has to happen that way. And it's really too bad that Jackson chose dollars over fans. It's, it's, it's simple as that. And then my other complaint was I thought the usage of Legolas was pretty weak in this film. Legolas had some of the coolest stuff to do in this entire trilogy in Desolation of Smog. But by the time you get to Battle of the Five Armies, there's just a lot of really stupid stuff he has to do in this. A lot of scenes that really feel fake and overly CGI'd. And, and I, I didn't like the uses of Legolas in this film. He just kind of felt like he was there for fan service. And he, I feel like he wasn't there like in part two where he got a lot of really cool stuff to do in that movie. I also feel like out of all three Hobbit films too, it feels like small amounts of material that feel really stretched out just to meet feature length material. Um, I really felt like they took like about three or four small little paragraphs of the book and just stretched it out as far as they could to make a two and a half hour film. It really feels stretched out in this movie. Um, like I said, it's good material, but it just feels like it, it was just stretched out for way too long than it needed to be. And then I also feel that this film out of all three of them was weakest on villains. The orcs and these other villains that, that Bilbo and the gang had to encounter in this movie really do feel generic after a while. I felt like I've seen this kind of stuff a million times before. Um, and it's really too bad because, you know, we got Smog in the second film and we got the orcs in the second film. And I don't know, I guess overall you can definitely tell that I'm a fan of Desolation of Smog out of all three of these. Uh, but like I said, villain-wise, it felt a little generic in this film. Overall, I'm going to give Hobbit Part 3 an 8 out of 10. I do think it's a good film. I think it's a nice looking film, and I think it's a nice send-off to this Hobbit trilogy. But overall, like I said, the CGI got a little bit too overly noticeable after a while, and it was applied the wrong way, I thought, after a while as well. I really could have used more standalone elements in this film. Uh, Legolas, I thought, could have been applied in a better way since, you know, they... He clearly wasn't in the Hobbit book, and they added him in here. And if that was the case, and if they wanted to keep him for this Part 3 film, 
give him something cooler to do. And like I said, the small material really feels stretched out after a while and got kind of annoying, to be honest. And then I also felt, like I said once again, that Hobbit Part 3 was weak in the villains department. So like I said, guys, 8 out of 10. It's a good film. If you like the first two Hobbit films, if you want to see kind of how the story wraps up, it is worth seeing. Um, I'll probably own it down the down the road. You know, I don't see me buying this film on, on the day it comes out. It really doesn't seem that urgent of a film, to be honest. So overall, good film, not a great one. And that's my take on this final Hobbit movie.